All right, and a good hello, everyone. Um, my name is David Fox, Training and Documentation Specialist here at ETC. Uh, I will be the host for our event today. Um, I have a couple of guests with me, uh, our panelists. I'd like to give them an opportunity to say hello, um, and then I'll go through a little bit of housekeeping and we can go ahead and move forward. So with me in this event today, we have Brian Barker. Brian, you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Brian Barker, I'm the Rigging Professional Services Manager uh, for ETC in Wisconsin. Fantastic. Uh, Ned Kit Pride, you want to say hi, Ned? Hi, I am the <clears throat> marketing product manager for Reading uh, Alvin Middleton. I hope, hope everybody's doing well today. Fantastic. Thank you. And our, our key presenter today is Stu Schatz. Stu, you want to say hello? Sure. Just wanted to say hello. Um, my name is Stuart Schatz. Uh, I am the Rigging uh, Regional Sales Manager for the South and Southeast. Fantastic. Thank you, three, the three of you, for joining us and for the 70 plus people that are sitting in the meeting today. Uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, quick bits of housekeeping here. Uh, you should be seeing uh, a screen right now and hopefully you're hearing us. If you have questions at any point in time during this presentation, feel free to enter your questions into the Q&A. Uh, that looks like a little square with a question mark. You can click on that and at that point you would uh, be able to type in any question that you want. We'll either answer those questions through the course of the presentation or Stu will take a couple of points at a natural pause to be able to pause so that we can make sure that we answer any questions that you might have. Uh, with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over Stu to you and uh, feel free to get started. All right, that's great. I wanted to let everybody know that it is recording, so uh, let's get on with it. Uh, automated rigging and cost benefits and solutions. So today um, we do have myself and Ned Kit Pride and Brian Barker there moderating to help answer questions, uh, like you said. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to identify some typical venues and events that require rigging systems, examine what stage rigging is and what choices are available today, particularly two different types. I'll review and res uh, the results and evaluate the impact of a cost study, a prize safety, accessibility, and functional capabilities. So what is rigging? Well, as I'm sure many of you do or do not know, uh, rigging is used all over the theater. It's also used in uh, many of other different types of places as well. But for right now, we're going to concentrate just on the theater itself. Um, and with that, we also really want to talk about what is a theater for and how is it to relate to us? So theater is a multi venue space dealing with drama, movies, assembly, dance, houses of worship. Basically, what this comes down to is that it really is a multi use space and is can be used for a variety of different things, um, even on any given day. But what makes theater different from any other places of assembly? Well, a large audience chamber with fixed seating uh, requires a dark room with theatrical lighting for things like dance and uh, other theatrical presentations. Challenging ADA and access requirements with video, rigging, lighting and sound. Uh, there is extensive control and power requirements. Um, and because it is a multi-use space, we do have rapid changeovers from one event to another where you may have a presentation, a speaker presentation in the afternoon, a dance concert at night, and then maybe even um, a choir concert, let's say in the, uh, the next morning. So this takes us back to stage rigging itself and why uh, and how is it used. So first and foremost, uh, it raises and lowers curtains. Uh, curtains not only frame the performance area, but mask off the backstage areas from which performance make their entrance, where props, scenery, and lighting are stowed. It protects the life of the soft goods. If any of you have ever priced out a set of uh, curtains for a theater space, you know that they can run tens of thousands of dollars. Provides access to lighting. Um, overhead lighting can be lowered in and access at the stage level where technicians can adjust positioning and maintain 
the heavy lighting fixtures without being at risk. Uh, rapid scene, uh, scene event and event changes, excuse me. Uh, we also talk about, oops, excuse me, uh, sound reinforcement as well uh, with microphones, speakers, uh, orchestra shell ceilings, and so forth. And my personal favorite is to keep the stage clear. So over the past 40 years, lighting and sound control for live theater has evolved from a clunky analog manually operated device as seen here. And if you do note, there's also a hemp rigging behind uh, this lighting console, which is also very nice. Um, and it's evolved into something a little bit more elegant today. Um, digital control uh, and sound, excuse me, digital control events through, uh, that are used throughout all of the country. The theatrical rigging industry, on the other hand, has been a little bit uh, reluctant to implement similar advancements. But before we do that, <clears throat> we're going to talk about one particular type of rigging. And it's called counterweight rigging. And we're going to go through just the quick basics of it because that's our first uh, type of rigging that we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a proscenium opening. And this is uh, if you're looking out on the stage, uh, out to the audience. Then we uh, add a horizontal pipe, a bar, a truss of some kind. Uh, we now suspend it from the ceiling via a wire rope. Nowadays, it's a steel wire rope that travels through a number of pulleys to a counterweight set, which is over here. And that offsets the weight of the particular gear or scenery on the batten. If you were to say you need to access this, one of the things we need to do is have a spotter. If you notice, the operator is facing away from um, the scenery, and that's just due to how this type of equipment works. So at this point, the operator then opens up the rope lock and lowers in the batten so that the technician can uh, access the lighting fixtures. At this point, the technician will then need to um, take off, take off the counterweight as pre-described is how much weight you're taking uh, on and off the batten. So if you're going to remove, let's say, 40 or 50 pounds of lighting fixtures off of a lighting off of a batten, the counterweight stack, which is our operator up above, which is right here, excuse me, um, needs to remove that weight first beforehand. These three people uh, are in constant communication with how this works. The other thing to note is that if this operator who is here is running this set, let's say there is a thousand pounds or even 2000 pounds of weight on this batten that's right here. When they try to move that, there's not only 2000 pounds here, but there's also 2000 pounds here on the weight arbor. So that's trying to move roughly 4000 pounds of mass, which is a very small car and it can be very difficult at times. The other thing to keep in mind is that as this, techni uh, this technician now needs to get up to this loading bridge if your school or theater has one. By today's standard, that loading bridge does need to be protected with fall arrest to prevent, uh, prevent any un unwanted accidents. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that while most of this is done during uh, a take up or set up and the tear down, um, it can also happen when your theater is dark. Making operational safety very much of a challenge from day to day. Many of these safety challenges can be addressed though, however, by automated rigging systems which can replace manual labor with electric motors. Motorization of theatrical rigging has existed for some time now, but the machines first designed for those applications were very expensive, both in purchase and to operate and maintain. With only the largest venues, the Met, Radio City Music Hall, etc., could afford to make such investments. It has only been in the last two decades that motorized rigging has become a con a considered viable for mid-sized to smaller venues. Today, the original 
uh, automated system consisting of completely custom hardware and software needing highly specialized staff to operate and maintain have been replaced with standard hardware and software that are easy to use by typical end users. With a modern, uh, modern automated system, you can eliminate the need for a loading rail up above, uh, as well as the lock rail down below, and then address the steel that is right here. When you take all of that into consideration, this is something of how the space might look today. If you look now, the operator can actually easily see the stage uh, and operate the scenery. There is now a loading, there, excuse me, there's an access platform instead of a loading bridge. Uh, and the steel has been, re been replaced and repurposed in the sense that uh, allows for easier uh, and more uh, use. So, however, with all of this, this is just the hardware we're talking about as far as the hoist and stuff are concerned, but the biggest advancements have been in the controls. Modern uh, automated rigging combines innovations with engineering, manufacturing, with advanced computerized controls and brings such technology within reach of the performance spaces that could use it the most. Recordable position, trims, presets, and cues for easily repeatable movement, real-time telem telemetry, position and weight, plus more, discrete speed and timing to meet the most demanding productions, integration of stage and, <clears throat> and scenic automation, stage lifts, acoustic banners, motorized staging, accessibility. Fewer people are required, both during setup and during the performance. Far more accessible uh, to those with disabilities, no loading rails and lofty places. Certainly less effort is needed to operate, just the press of a button instead of influencing thousands of pounds and hopefully a well-balanced mass. Scalable, <clears throat> excuse me, scalable user controls, key switch, password protection, permission levels, with multi -speed, multiple speed and feature constraints. Safety, distributed safety and control points, remote e-stops, portable controllers, and multi-controller options. System self-test and status monitoring and reporting. Redundant fail safe safety systems to ensure reliable function. Load cells and current overprotection and hoist <clears throat> in hoist to prevent use while overloaded or damaged. Slack line cross uh, groove detection to avert damage to the hoist. The advantages can be gained uh, use of an automated rigging system would lend you to ask why would anyone uh, want to use a manual counterweight system? Well, the biggest thing is cost. However, before I get into cost, I do want to talk a little bit more about what ETC has for rigging solutions. I'm going to take a quick break if anybody has any uh, questions or should I continue? Uh, we've been managing the questions as they've been coming in. Actually, uh, we haven't had a whole lot of questions yet, so okay. uh, I think you can go ahead and continue. But that said, if anyone during this presentation has any questions whatsoever, uh, please type them in and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Great. You're doing great, Stu. Thanks. OK, before I get started, we're going to talk a little bit about ETC solutions. I do have a quick video uh, for everybody to watch, so hopefully it comes through well. In 2009, ETC introduced the Prodigy family of automation solutions a new class of overstage machinery systems for modern venues. This technology is no longer restricted to venues with high budgets and expert level staff. ETC's Prodigy offers a package that is user-friendly, affordable to install, and safely increases the functionality of your flown equipment. Prodigy hoists are built around a groundbreaking sloped drum, which makes for a smaller, lighter machine that fits in more places with less structural support. There is a variety of models, each of which can be installed in a number of configurations with a slender design that enables close line set placement. 
All Prodigy hoists can utilize the unique compression tube technology, which allows the system to be connected to a structure with fewer brackets independent of the loft line placement. It cancels out the lateral forces usually created by traditional rigging systems, meaning it can reduce new installation costs and allow retrofits in spaces not traditionally designed for stage machinery systems. Every model includes a slack line sensor and load cell displaying the real-time weight. Coupled with intelligent profiling technology, each motor will instantly halt when it unexpectedly encounters an obstacle in its path. The hoist has built-in sensors that constantly track, test and log information such as distance travelled and weight load errors. The Prodigy system requires an extremely simple infrastructure as each hoist needs just one cable for power and one for control. A package of 24 machines only requires a single Cat5e cable to connect the hoists to the controller. Prodigy can include a low-profile cable management system that cleanly hides cabling, as well as pantographs or traditional power options. They accommodate many circuits of power, including emergency, and can contain DMX or network-based data communication. ETC's automation controllers deliver high functionality without a high price tag. From the most basic quick touch series to the flagship foundation controller, you'll experience an interface unlike anything you've seen for a stage machinery system. With easy to understand displays like current weight and position, there are installed and remote options to fit your venue and enable you to execute your automation changes elegantly. ETC's commitment to safety means that everything in the load path is engineered to a 10 to 1 design factor and every hoist goes through a comprehensive quality test before it ships. The Prodigy family gives you better access to your flown system from an approachable interface, making your venue safer and more efficient. It provides you the time and peace of mind to concentrate on your production. This technology is available now, with options as affordable as a traditional counterweight system. With Prodigy, the modern theatre is finally within reach. So we wanted to talk real briefly then um, about uh, what we have to offer. Um, basically, it's going to fall into about three different categories between standard, budget, and high capacity, and I will uh, just briefly talk about those in a minute. For standard solutions, we start with um, what we call P1, which is the compression tube technology. There was a part of the video that showed you how the compression tube works as far as attaching to different uh, overhead steel and allowing us to place our loft blocks and our lift lines in locations that make it right for the batten. Um, while the structure overhead may be limited or um, retrofit sort of fashion. Uh, P2 is another option that we have. All of the hoist models have a variety of different weights ranging from, as far as our standard models, ranging from uh, 650 pounds all the way up to uh, 2,000 pounds as far as our standard solutions are concerned. Um, all of these particular solutions use 3 16 cable uh, and can go up to 62 feet uh, or 50 feet worth of travel. One of the things I wanted to bring up as well as our standard solutions um, is our Prodigy cable management. Uh, it is a very, very unique system that is uh, only by ETC. Um, it makes it great for front of house positions. Uh, as far as you can see, the, the sled that's actually sliding a little bit toward uh, the power head right now. As you can see, it is a very, very clean look. Um, and it can do anywhere from, uh, it can do up to 48 circuits, although more traditionally we're in that 12 to 24 circuits uh, with four runs of data. It's very, very neat. Uh, for <clears throat> stage pantographs can be also be used where Prodigy cab cable management is not uh, possible. However, you're still looking for some sort of a control method for uh, power and control requirements. Uh, it is very quick installation. The one thing that I would like to remind everybody is that all of our um, cable management systems are 100% uh, UL uh, based in their design at 100% uh, diversity. In stage pantographs, we can go up to 16 circuits with four runs of data. 
Um, it also works very, very good for very tall, narrow uh, installations, particularly here at uh, iStudio. This is actually the old Johnny Carson studio, which is a very neat installation. Initially, uh, this particular space wanted Prodigy Cable Management, and due to the overall travel height and the width of the batten, that was not able to be accomplished, and so we ended up with stage pantographs instead. Um, but note that that can be used, stage pantographs can be used with any one of our um, uh, hoists options. Um, Prodigy Cable Management is relegated to something that does use compression tube, the P75, the P1, and P2s. Uh, then we can also support traditional cable management when you're where visibility of the uh, SO cable is not necessarily a concern, uh, and yet you have plenty of offstage space in order to use it. Let's talk a little bit about budget solutions, which is our newest member to the ETC Prodigy line, which is Flypipe and then Flypipe Studio. Uh, Flypipe and Flypipe Studio is a self climbing type of hoist. Um, they're very, very unique. Uh, in a sense that they can get into a lot of places where even Prodigy being a nimble uh, hoist, hoist body is also unable to get to. Uh, Flypipe Studio, which I believe is our newest member of our family, as well as, um, um, excuse me, um, our, the cable management system, which is depicted right here, which is called uh, Helix, and I have a quick video of that as well but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the next thing is our high capacity. So we're gonna talk P75. Now those range, we do have variable speeds for that up to uh, 1200 pounds in variable speed. We also have a 2000 pound variety and we also have a 3300 pound variety. These use quarter inch wire rope um, and they can travel up to 75 feet of, of uh, space. Um, we also do have a self climbing unit as well, which you can see in a, uh, a spigoted Thomas truss or Tomcat truss, excuse me, um, and that can be used as well. That unit itself is a 3300 pound unit. Also on the high capacity, custom is more of a custom solution. So we have uh, the Vortec and event style hoist. So we have an event style hoist here for things like scoreboards and all the way up to, I wanna say 165,000 pounds, I believe is the heaviest hoist that we made to date. Um, we also have other custom units like high speed main curtains um, and other possibilities. Um, and that really is kind of endless as far as uh, if you need it, I believe we can build it. Uh, on the control side, um, I want to talk a little bit about the queue, uh, a queuing type of controller, a preset controller, and a utility type controller. On the queue side, we have our foundation uh, platform, both a wall mount and a desk mount uh, as needed. Uh, we do have those available uh, in a server type system as well uh, to provide a big, big solution for a large performing arts center. And even if it is just, uh, not a large performing arts center, if you have a need for a queuing type of apparatus um, and controller, uh, we can certainly uh, accommodate you in that regards. Uh, Foundation has everything that you could imagine that an ETC console would have. It has weights, delays, timing, all sorts of great things that uh, can really uh, help your performance uh, excel. We also do also uh, have a new uh, handheld control device, which you can see it right here. Um, it's also very nice. The one really nice thing about the, uh, all of our handheld devices is that the UI or the user interface for that particular device mimics the console as well. So you don't really have to um, learn a new language just to use the handheld remote. For preset solutions, if you have a need to have hoist move in opposite directions at the same time and want to have a preset look per se and still have the and have a better control more than just say a utility uh, utility setup 
This is our option. We have a handheld remote that is can be a standalone controller that plugs into the wall, or we have preset stations as well. Uh, it's a very nice control. All of them, both the foundation and the preset controllers have a uh, password protected that can be set by the end user um, for a variety of level of control distributed through the theater. And then for utility controls, our quick touch platform, we have quick touch plus or quick touch. Um, and we can certainly go into more about that uh, if you require. Uh, there's this is basically um, select a hoist. Uh, raise it up, raise it down, bring it into a targeted position. Uh, Q Quick Touch Plus that is shown here um, has up to five different settings for an end user to uh, stop at. There's the upper, the lower, and then three user set um, recordable positions. Uh, it does have a variable variable speed pot if you do have, say, a variable uh, speed main curtain or a biparting curtain that's on the control that's variable speed as well. We do have the ability to do that. All right. Are there any questions at the moment? Sorry about that. Uh, yes, we uh, we have had a couple of questions that have come in. Um, okay. Most of them have been answered by our most excellent set of panelists okay. uh, but one question that came in uh is is it possible to link foundation and eos um or to run rigging cues uh in in simultaneously with lighting cues the best answer that i can understand right now is that our lighting console will not run our lighting consoles will not talk to a rigging console as in like they can't we can't be sending a queue from from eos to a foundation controller to operate the rigging um if that's okay. what the, if that's what the question is i believe that's what the question was there, if, if there if we need more clarification I'm, uh, i think they'll come back in yes. that makes perfect yep sense. and yeah i would be happy to answer it in a little bit more a little bit more fully too as well Excellent. Uh, another question that came in um, is in regards to the P75. Yeah. Um, looking at the data sheet for the P75, the dimension for the dimensions of the smaller one, um, there's also seems to be a different one, a, a larger sized version of the P75. Uh, can you talk a little bit about sure. when you would want to use the different sizes of the P75? Sure. So basically we have two different body styles for the p75 which you just mentioned the the smaller frame is the variable speed unit and the 2000 pound unit um, the larger frame for p75 has to deal with the 3300 um, and that is mainly due to the gearbox and motor required to lift that that type of load so that's that's why you have the two different sizes perfect thank you um other question that came in, uh, can you have multiple uh, consoles um, or multiple control solutions in a system? So could you have, you know, the, the wall mount controller that you have here and a remote and other things at the same time? Oh, yes, definitely. OK, oh, uh, but I see Brian's actually answering this question in greater detail, so I'll let we can let him go forward with that. Yep. No, absolutely. Um, with quick touch, we can we can pair up a couple of uh, uh, quick touch pluses together. It's called a merge system. Um, but if you have a foundation console and you have a multiple access points, let's say out in the house or stage left versus stage right, um, we certainly have the ability to do that as well. That um, gets a little bit more complicated. Um, it generally involves a server system, um, but it is something we have done and certainly can do. Fantastic. Um, and I see we have a, another ETC lurker hiding in the session um, uh, who is one of our EOS masters um, who did want to make sure uh, to further the answer in the question about um, EOS and foundation integration. Um, foundation is capable of sending an OSC message to notify EOS of its status, but it is not going to act on a queue. Yep. Excellent. I think those are all the questions that we've had come in at this point. Um, so okay. if you want to continue moving forward, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So 
cost-benefit analysis. So we talk a little bit about the solutions that ETC has in an overview type of sense. And we talked a little bit about counterweight rigging and, and uh, a little bit of the differences there with uh, motorized rigging. And we talked about, well, you know, why would anybody want to do counterweight rigging versus motorized rigging? And a lot of it has to do with cost. And that cost difference back before, let's say, 10 to 20 years ago, um, with all of the automated rigging being a custom solution, <clears throat> it was a very expensive and it was really known to be about two to three times the cost versus say a counterweight, an installed counterweight set. And one of the things that we had been experiencing is the evolution of standard equipment being able to meet um, greater and greater variety of theater shapes and sizes, which we all know that they come in different. And we wanted to kind of figure out, okay, since we're getting economy of scale with all of our with all of our standard equipment, are we able to, are we still two or three times the cost? And is it something that is is that still true? And so we commissioned a study that um, really wanted to try to figure out what the true costs are. In a, in a more of an apples to apples sort of situation. So we really wanted to look at what are the real costs of automated rigging compared to the counterweight system. We do know that manual equipment versus the automated equipment, there's gonna be a big disparity um, between the two. Um, but one of the things we really wanted to consider was the construction cost. As in, we know that both types of equipment affect the building differently as far as its loading, as far as the requirements are concerned, and so forth. So one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to actually commission a cost study. So the first thing that we did was um, we got a third party consultant involved to review structural steel and installation the masonry and foundation of a space. We engaged with a uh, rigging installer uh, to estimate the cost of both types of systems. <clears throat> we did have increased electrical costs for the motorized system. And then we compared the studies in four different regions in the, uh, in the US to just to make sure that we had a good average point of reference so that one wasn't skewed versus the other per se. But before we do that, we kind of had to figure out, well, what are we, what are we actually designing? Like what are, what are, what kind of theater are we going to go, go with here? And so we really wanted to come up with a space that wasn't a large performing arts center, but wasn't a really small type theater. So we came up with stage dimensions with um, that are 76 feet wide, 33 feet deep, a proscenium opening at 52 feet wide, and 24 feet high. The line set data, that's the individual pipes or individual battens that I showed you, of uh, 62 feet long, uh, had a high trim of 48 feet, a low trim of four feet, travel of 44 feet, and set capacity, uh, electrics at 2,000 pounds and utility sets at 1,400 pounds. Now for stage electrics, <coughs> excuse me, for the weight on a counterweight set, that's basically the size of your arbor and the um, this capacity. And for a motor, it's about the size of the motor and gearbox. So the first thing that I do or that when I am looked at when, excuse me, when I look at a stage and I start uh, figuring out what kind of line sets and so forth, you really start with the electrics because essentially you put, uh, you get into a section view, you put our talent on the stage and you really want to light them properly. With these set dimensions and so forth, I end up with four stage electrics. From there, we add a valance and a front curtain mass the electrics and the offstage space, we add borders and legs. 
we add a mid-stage curtain, a rear curtain, and a cyclorama. It's just 15 sets. It's not a very large theater, but it's not a real small theater as well. So just 15 sets. When you put all of this information in together with the stage dimensions and the line set data and everything else, we end up with a counterweight drawing that looks like so. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the requirements for the loading bridge. That loading bridge requires 450 pounds per square foot. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, what this is, is all the weight that is required for this. So let's say this is one of our electrics. Our, one, our electric is 2,000 pounds of capacity. If I don't have anything on it, it's called pipe weight. And at that point, you really only have a couple of stage weights on this arbor, and the rest of them need to sit on that platform. All right. Next thing we look at is the reinforced wall for the guide arbor or excuse me, the guide wall. The guide wall itself doesn't necessarily see the full weight of the system, but it does need to be able to be stout enough to be able to control the arbors while they're on the guide wall. Uh, a, CM, a fill CMU block wall is required or some sort of substantial backing. The steel is designed for lateral loading. Uh, for those of you who do not know what lateral loading is, it's essentially if I have weight that's pulling here and weight that is pulling here, lateral loading is the twisting force on each one of these steel members. And it is pulling and trying to twist those beams as we go. If you look over here at what we call the head block beams, you'll see three of them with one of them kicked on the side like this to try to resist those forces. Um, so we have that. Then we also have the foundation and floor weight to handle uh, both the wall and the locking rail. The locking rail does need to uh, be able to withstand 500 pounds of lineal feet um, in case of an out of balance arbor. One of the things I'd like to point out is that as this operational side of things is for those of you who have not ever had to load and unload counterweight if you notice this relationship of this arbor is very very uh, important in the sense where the cables have to turn and go around this head block right here if you have a pipe at pipe weight it is two maybe maybe four counterweights that puts it right about here so your first six to ten counterweights are all going to be below this count this catwalk and it can be very strenuous to do so so you take all of these things into mind as they're building a building and and one of the things we came up with is the cost. Now, please keep in mind that the building costs are not the cost of the building, but it is the cost that is required to reinforce the building based on the equipment that we have laid out here. So we get building costs um, and the rigging equipment and installation for those 15 sets at right around 280,000. Now, Let's look at what the automated rigging might look like and how ETC might resolve this. The first thing is the respace steel and no side loads. And the reason for that is this counterweight, excuse me, this uh, compression tube member, which is right here. Okay. Um, that compression tube member allows us to act on the building in purely only a downward force in this in this direction. So those steel can take the the steel now only needs to support just the weight of the equipment and the weight and requirements of the roof itself. We did have increased electrical cost for the hoists. Uh, instead of a loading bridge, we do have a service platform. I will say at putting the hoist at right around 45 feet or 44 feet or so, uh, excuse me, 46 feet. Um, a way to get to the hoist is very, very important. Um, whether it's counterweight rigging or motorized rigging, you still need to service your, your gear. Um, if you get much over that 35 to 40 foot range, a single man genie is very difficult to come by. And so we always recommend that service platform. 
uh, the wall reduction uh, and foundation uh, because of the no guide wall. Plus, you also gain floor space. The um, <laughs> as you can imagine, the space on a stage is extraordinarily important, and so getting gaining any is very much uh, needed. So you take all of this into account, and we end up with building costs around eighty nine thousand. And rigging equipment at 265, which is a total of 354. So while it is more expensive, which doesn't surprise me, the biggest thing is, is how much? It's about a 26%. It is certainly not two or three times the costs that a manual counterweight set is. That's so 26%. You really want to look at that and say, okay. What am I really gaining for 26% more? Well, you know, I'm gaining it's ideally suited for schools and universities. It's multi layers of safety and control, it's certainly more accessible for people of all needs. Uh, freedom of movement, movement <clears throat> less effort to use, and few people are required, uh, and less exposure to potential risk. Um, when we talk about the um, our uh, automated solutions, we also talk about accurate, repeatable actions, discrete programming and timing, key switch user access, uh, access levels, uh, automated system self, uh, self test, and uh, safety functions. And that is what I have for a presentation. Thank you for joining. Are there any questions? Stu, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure questions are going to start coming in. Um, there's one question sitting in the queue right now, okay. uh, which is do foundation consoles have any kind of a visualizer um, similar to what you see with augmented? No, not at the moment. Makes sense. Uh, look, look to your stage, I suppose would be the best way to look at that. Um, uh, are there any cost studies available for renovations? The cost study you presented is fine if you have a new building, but if the theater is already built, is there a, is there a similar set of mathematical formula we could look at? Um, no, however, um, you know, budgeting is something that we can certainly do very, very quickly to try to give uh, an end user, an architect, or anybody a kind of an, a, an idea of scale that they would be looking at to do uh, a renovation. Uh, oftentimes in renovation work, so much depends on what is, you know, so much of the cost depends on both what they want to do with the space, how they're using the space, and then what existing, you know, uh, structure is there and so forth. So that, that's a tough one to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's certainly something that, um, you know, that, that we, we can we can do very very quickly if they have any something specific fantastic um i'm assuming if somebody wanted to get more information for that they could contact uh their local etc dealer or rep and they could work yep. with them to come up with some costing yep Excellent. you got it a um, couple more questions have come in uh can you talk a little bit about the cost difference between manual rigging systems and automated rigging systems in terms of maintenance and regular inspection well that's a pretty easy one. Um, as far as uh, I'll, I'll address the inspection portion, um, no matter what it is, whether it's counterweight or motorized uh, or dead hung or chain hoist and truss, it needs to be it needs to be inspected yearly. Um, so that's generally uh, the case. Um, the nice thing about um, I would say with motorized rigging is that if part of the safety systems that are engaged like slack line, uh, cross groove detection and so forth that are all there, not only to protect people, but to also help protect the equipment as well. So if you've ever um, gone fishing before and you throw that line out and you forget to stop the spool and it kind of spools up on you and it kind of gets what's called a bird nest, um, we have systems in uh, in place to try to prevent that from happening on hoist. Um, 
things like when you're dealing with counterweight systems, um, things like well, runaways and uh, user error accidents can oftentimes cause damage to systems uh, long before they're, you know, before they're preventable. Um, I'm not really sure that really answers, totally answers the question, but uh, is that close? I think that's close. Um, follow up question, and this was not asked by our, our users, so this is me asking. So if I'm asking a loaded question, um, I apologize. You can tell me to stop. But oh. if memory serves, um, our Prodigy systems actually have built in timers to remind you when it's time to perform maintenance as well, don't they? Yes. So that's, 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 the, that's another difference is that an automated system is going to let you know when it's time for maintenance and it's going to give you alerts when it's running into technical issues, whereas a manual system would not. Yep. The other, the other nice thing, and I will follow up with you on that as well, um, and I touched it briefly, but um, Every, as far as a motorized can system in our systems, every move, every time it turns on, every time it self checks, um, every time that there may have been an issue or may not have been an issue is recorded. So even if you're a new end user or new to your space, um, there are ways for us to kind of break down any kind of problematic or non-problematic issue you may be having on your system and pinpoint when it happened. Um, so that's also nice as well. That's a great feature. Um, I know I, I for one would enjoy that. A uh, question came in. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how the system integrates with fire curtains or other emergency systems? Hmm. Well, generally with fire curtains, and this is my opinion, generally um, fire curtains are a standalone uh, type of thing. However, um, I could see I could see us integrating with a fire curtain. However, its release and how it's integrated, integrating with the fire safety systems of the building, whether it's an electronic release or whether it's just a um, fusible link of some sort, well, that would all be independent of our particular control. Um, if that answers your question. Does, Pro does is Prodigy capable of or any automated rigging i should stop using just prodigy um is our is automated rigging capable of receiving an emergency signal and stopping right so saying that there's there's an emergency condition on stage and we want to disable the rigging system temporarily oh i see um i think the short answer to that is yes um the long answer is is something that i would have to work or we would have to work with applications engineering to see how we would get the emergency system into our e-stop system and how that signal looks. But I don't think that that's something that is not, I'm, I do believe that is possible. Excellent, excellent. I know this was a question that came up once before, um, but we've had another person ask the question again. So I just uh -huh. wanna make, I wanna give you an opportunity to talk about it a little bit more. Sure. Um, back to P75s. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the differences between the two sizes of the P75 and when the larger one should be used instead of the smaller one? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, essentially, um, the smaller frame P75 is a variable speed and a 2,000 pound capacity hoist. So the larger size is a 3,300 pound capacity hoist. Um, and so that really depends on um, if you're going to use, if you need something like an orchestra shell or a, uh, that requires more capacity than 2,000 pounds or even a, a very heavy electric um, and so forth. So that that's, that's basically when you start utilizing that larger P75 is for heavier loads or heavier situations. Fantastic. Um, I include for those of you that are online, um, I've included a link with that question that takes you directly to the P75 page um, that can help answer some questions. Um, I see that there's a couple of questions that are being answered by our panelists, but there are a couple more um, as we have a lot of questions coming in. Thank you attendees for, for asking these questions. Um, how do load cell and slack line detection improve safety when in, when compared to counterweight operation? Oh, great. So great example um we'll we'll address uh slack line first so let's say you have a ladder or a flat or a set piece 
uh, that's on stage and you're bringing in a baton to hang, let's say a chandelier or some or some other type of scenic element. As you're bringing that baton in and it catches, the the baton end catches the flat, your, you know, your, 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 your baton, one end is going to stay up and your cables are going to kind of start to flop around on you. Well, that's basically a slack line situation. For our hoist, our motorized solution, that stops very, very quickly. Um, I want to say it's between one to six inches, if not less, by the time that engages. And what you're doing is you're pretend you are one, you are uh, you're trying to limit the any kind of damage if that were to slip off or the flat collapses or something along that lines um, allows a shock load to the uh, to the system. You're really trying to prevent that. Um, on a counterweight set, you can be pulling it in and you can be muscling it in, muscling it in, and all of a sudden you catch on it. And if you're really not paying attention, um, you could drive it in a lot farther than it's required. You can bend the batten. Um, uh, and again, it could do that shock load. The nice thing about it, it's not that it's when you're operating motorized system that you don't need to pay attention because clearly you do. You're operating a uh, any kind of rigging. You have to pay attention or have spotters if you can't see. Um, but it does offer you that added bit of safety. Uh, one, uh, the cable won't jump around. Um, on the motorized system, um, it prevents that bird nesting that I talked about just on the drum side um, and so forth. Um, there was a second part to that question. I apologize. No, that's not a problem. Um, let me, uh, the other question uh, was load cells. Well, load cell is, is again, um, as far as a safety concern, one, it's uh, it allows the customer or allows end user to know how much weight is on that particular baton. Um, the hoist itself will not be able to pick it up um, if it uh, if it exceeds what its capacity is. Um, it also allows us to do um, a load curve or load profiling, which let's say let's say you have a flat on there and you're running your scenery out and if load profiling is on load profiling has a curve of load that that hoist should be seeing throughout its travel and if it should change whether the flat catches on something the batten catches on something or some other kind of anomaly that prevents the batten from operating smoothly that Slat, or excuse me, that load detection will actually help engage um, and stop the system, prevent damage to both the scenery, to people, and to, to gear. Counterweight system, there is nothing like that other than your feel of the rope and how it's pulling. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I, I remember um, ago, I think the clearest example I saw of some of that was. Uh, a prodigy line where the the weight had been captured was was being traveled out and uh, somebody grabbed the pipe just to kind of hang on it because yep. you know it's a pipe um, and the system immediately stops because it's detected that that cha that change in weight um, and the system stops until you can manually clear that um, whereas as you had said uh, an operator who was pulling on that line may just keep pulling um, and not really notice why it got heavier, but just assume to go through. Same thing. Same thing with um, with the slack line, right? Is if you catch on something, it's very easy for the it's very easy to manually continue to pull that line in and not notice that you've shifted balance and weight yep. um, until you've gotten yourself into an unsafe condition. Whereas an automated system would definitely recognize it a lot faster and stop the condition and yep. tell you why. Um, which I think is great. Well, and I do want to clarify. I mean, I realize we're on an ATC site, as and, you know, and we're talking about ETC, but on ETC is one uh, also for, like everything that we have offers those all of those features. You can get motor. There are motorized solutions out there that do not have all of those solutions, um, and that's one of the things that we really stand fast on is our safety and our commitment to safety, um, and so forth. So. Excellent. I think I think what you just said ties into the next question I wanted to ask you, which is, um, can you talk a bit about the benefits besides cost 
um, that uh, be between a, a, an automated system and a counterweight system? Sure. Um, the biggest one is just peace of mind, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so one of the things that you run into, unfortunately, is the lack of the lack of training um, in a theater space. And it's not that when a theater is brand new, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll make the point here in a second, but when the when a theater is brand new, the teachers get trained, the students get trained, everybody is all gun ho and it's really, really well done. The next year the students graduate, teacher moves on. The new theater space itself, um, you have people that may or may not know how to operate it. Um, the nice thing about motorized rigging and not only other manuals, but two, there is a bit of fail safe there to help a new user understand how to operate it properly. Um, with a counterweight set, a lot of it is word of mouth or this is how we've always done it, uh, these kind of things. Um, so it's not that any rigging doesn't need to be taken lightly because it, you know, motorized rigging and uh, counterweight rigging need to be um, taken very seriously. Um, let me see. As far as other benefits are concerned, um, I know I mentioned it briefly, but if you've ever loaded up an electric before on a counterweight set and have put, you know, several thousand pounds of counterweight up, it gets it gets tiring after a while. And to be able to, to not to be cliche, but to be able to push a button and raise and lower things really al does allow you to really work on your production more than just how to get your lights in the air. There's a huge safety factor in it as well, and you're not oh, trying yes. to guess on weight. You know, one, 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 one leco equals how many pieces of steel that I need to throw onto the pipe, and what do you do in an out of weight condition? Um, right. Well, and I do want to reiterate. Um, you know, counterweight systems are used safely all throughout the country. However, when it comes to what I would call advanced fly rail techniques, I would say most high schools do not have proper training to do that. And that is exactly what you mentioned with how do I deal with an out of weight, you know, an out of weight situation safely mm -hmm. versus just trying to add more people to it. Right, right. Great question. Uh, could you describe uh, what the annual maintenance is for a Prodigy system, and is it something that an end user can perform? Mm. Well, the short answer is the annual maintenance is something that we really want to have a, a ATC certified rigging installer um, perform. Um, a lot of that has to do with um, the settings on the console as well as being able to access and actually physically uh, test all of the limits. They test um, both the load cell, they test the, the limits, the, e, uh, the emergency systems, and then they also generate a report that has a, a liability satisfa uh, factor as well that um, is something that um is beneficial to uh, a theater to have in their back pocket is to have that third party evaluation i will say that as an end user there is there is a responsibility for daily awareness of your rigging systems as far as safety checks and so forth um, and that's something that as a as a trained user gets used to understanding now as far as regular maintenance is concerned, the motor and gearboxes that we that ETC utilizes uh, is from Nord for the most of our equipment. Um, these are designed for not only high capacity but high wear. And when we talk to Nord about our uh, what's, uh, what's called our life cycle or the um, the duty rating on the on the motor and gearbox, we are nowhere near um, anywhere. <laughs> anywhere near its life cycle um, as far as hoists are concerned. So as far as what we do, there is very little, very little maintenance um, due. Um, it does depend on um, 
on some of our hoist does require a couple of yearly maintenance things, but most of our hoists are pretty maintenance free. Excellent, thank you. Um, to those people that were asking the question, I also posted a link um, in the Q&A to the support pages uh, for our, our Prodigy con hoists, controllers, and accessories, so you can look at some of that additional information. Um, I know from, from the past also that in some cases, um, either the facility or potentially your insurance company may require your rigging system to go through an annual maintenance performed by a professional. Yep. Um, so whether or not it's something you feel comfortable doing, it might be something that's required. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got a number of questions coming in. I'm just trying to figure out the order to go with them um, in no particular order here. Uh, can, e can an ETC system or an automated rigging system be added alongside a manual system? So could I upgrade yes. a system with a few line sets at a time or do I need to do the whole thing at once? Um, it certainly can be added in. Um, we, I, we've done a number of theaters where we've motorized the, the electrics first or the shells, the electrics and the shell, and they left the counterweight system in. Um, if the goal if the goal is to eventually go all motorized on that very first installation, I would generally put in the control infrastructure um, that would be the maximum allowed in that theater as far as I, you know, the number of hoists are concerned. Only because the real, not the real expense, but a big expense is, uh, you know, having that electrician add all that power and control. And if you do the whole thing uh, with just future slots available, then it makes adding hoist much more feasible down the road. Great, great answer. Sorry, I'm talking and typing at the same time, which is never something that I do very well. Um, Two more questions in the queue. Um, next one is, uh, are there some key points that ETC has available that may help sell a motorized system to a venue that already has a counterweight system? Uh, basically, you know, tips and tricks to try and overshadow the sticker shock of saying you should replace this entire system and this is how much it's going to cost you. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a uh, that's a daily conversation. I'm sure it is. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big part of what we wanted to talk about today. So do. I mean, if you're if. Yeah, there's there's a lot of key. There's a lot of key things that we all talk about as, as definitely as far as the safety is concerned. That is definitely one aspect of it. Um, uh, the other aspect is, you know. Ease of ease of uh, shows. Uh, and the ease of programming. I know there's a lot of, especially on the in the on, on the rigging side, that there can be a lot of uh, disparity as far as a computer controlled system, and uh, it can be it can be daunting. But I can tell you that one of the really nice things, as far as uh, our controllers are concerned, is they're very very user friendly, um, and it becomes programming a show very very simple. Uh, as far as that's concerned, <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, where does the theater want to take itself, and does it does it feel that motorized system is a solution? Um, we, that's a, it's a good discussion to have. It's a it's a, it's a tough one to answer because they're not wrong. I mean, if you were to put twenty four or thirty variable speed motors on a on a job, it, there's there is a there's a price tag associated with that, but you are gaining a lot of freedom in that space to be able and to do it, and a lot of safety and a lot of other advantages. Yes, absolutely. Um, and and as you said, this is you know something that you get asked on a regular basis, um, and I know that our our dealers and and reps do as well. So I would say to the person that asked that question because um, it was asked anonymously. Uh, I would definitely reach out to your local dealer because they can absolutely help you put together that convincing argument um, or your regional sales managers or the ETC can help you put together that that's that specific argument that's tailored to meet the needs of your facility yep. um, in terms of what those talking points need to be. Well, and the other thing that I, I do want to mention is, uh, you know, I, I you know I said, you know, 30 variable speed motors. Well, that's kind of like the Cadillac of the space. 
You know, there, there have been a number of projects where they initially asked for what I call a full boat, full boat of uh, more of variable speed hoist, um, and it was too much. However, because of the different solutions that ETC has, we were able to give them some variable speeds, but then some were fixed speeds, some were of different weight capacity, so they were still able to get variable speeds in key places on their stage and still have and still keep um, a motorized solution for the entire space. They've been very happy with it. So it's, um, you know, that's, there's, there are several ways to combat the cost, the overall cost of a job. Right. No, that's great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, one last question sitting in the queue here, um, and I've actually had two different people ask it. Okay. Um, and and, you're, and I think this is a question you're going to like because it re gives you re <laughs> really gives you a chance to to shine about ETC, which is uh, what are the advantages of an ETC rigging system compared to manufacturers of other automated rigging systems? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I knew you were going to like that one. <laughs> Um, I can tell you this. One of the things that I'm very proud of uh, is the back support that we have at ETC. Um, the One of the really, really cool things is our phone support. If you don't know ETC phone support, um, I'm very happy that you don't know it, which means you don't have any, haven't had any problems. But when you do have an issue, there's always somebody there. Um, I feel that our our dealer network, our rep network um, is extraordinarily strong and it helps that end user when they need us the most, which is in a crunch. And when they need something to just work for that night or they need it to work next week, um, we stand behind our product in the sense that, that um, we always want them to feel that they are supported by us, um, that they, that we care the most about their production, no matter what size of building it is and what production is going on. It means everything to us because it means everything to them. Um, that's, to be completely honest, that really is the thing that shines the most uh, as far as one hoist to another hoist is our, our one, our commitment to safety, our commitment to follow things through and the staff that backs it up. As someone who spent over a decade in support, I appreciate that answer. Um, thank you. No, that's a good, that's a great answer. Uh, another question came in. Um, what if we need a lot of line sets but don't have enough power to run more than a few? That's a great question. Um, actually, our controllers, um, we could have 35 hoist, 40 hoist, and we can have our controllers say we can only run one or two or four at a time. So that means we can we can tailor the rigging space based on the power that is required, or excuse me, the power that is available. So while you may only run one or two hoists at a time, and you only have power for one or two hoists at a time, you still are able to uh, have multiple hoists on your system. If that makes Excellent. sense. Um, we'll see if they have a follow up on that one. Uh, it made sense to me. Have you ever installed one of these systems in a black box theater? Yes. Easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've even put we've even put a hoist in a parking garage. So, well, uh, if you have a lifting requirement or need, we'd be happy to look at a solution for you. That's a great answer. Um, I don't see any other questions sitting here in the queue. Um, Brian, okay. Ned, I know you guys have been feverishly typing um, in the background. Is there anything that you wanted to share or anything else you wanted to, you may want to talk about? Um, I guess instead of finishing up typing what I was going to type, uh, I'll just tag on to Stu's answer about the advantages of ETC rigging systems. Um, on that service point, I think it's also very worth mentioning that um, there's a lot of value in, for an end user in the fact that we manufacture all the other parts of the theater system as well. 
and having an entire system where everything in the venue can be they can get help with any of their equipment by calling one phone number rather than you know if you're bringing in an electric and you have a problem with a lighting fixture and the manufacturer the hoist is you know one manufacturer for the hoist and one manufacturer for the cable management system and one manufacturer for the lighting fixture which one do they call when they have a problem uh, with an ETC rigging system they can call one number and get an answer no matter what where the problem might be uh, within that entire chain so that's another really big advantage and beyond that I would also say very straight up I don't think that there's another company right now that matches our control systems um, at each level of what we what we provide and the and the grand total of those things and their ease of use and, and ease of operation I think that our our offering for uh, rigging controls is is a uh, no. Pretty dang hard to beat. No. no That's a great answer. That is a great answer. Brian, do you have anything you want to add? I do not. I think everyone summed it up uh, pretty spectacular. It's great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I haven't seen any other additional questions come in. Um, I do want to thank all of our attendees, uh, not only for joining us for this session today, but for spending the extra 15 minutes uh, doing uh, a little extra time to make sure that everybody got questions answered. The fact that you all wanted to see those answers um, tells me that we're doing something potentially right. And uh, thank you for those of you that participated and asked us such great questions. This session has been recorded. Uh, a recorded version of this session will be made available on our YouTube study hall channel. Um, that's going to take uh, probably a day or so in order to get up in line, online and published, but you'll be able to find it there. Um, if you're interested in additional rigging classes or in additional um, anything else that we're doing, please do take a look at our study hall pages. I do see a couple of additional questions came in and um, I'll give a get a, in a moment. I'll ask I'll ask those to our team, um, but do take advantage of any of the other study hall offerings that we that we have up. I know uh, we have another rigging session that's going to be coming up. Um, in the future, so uh, keep an eye on the on the schedule. Um, and if you see anything else that you would like us to offer, or you have any other rigging classes that you'd like to see us do, please do let us know. Um, you can you can let us know at technical training at our tech train sorry tech training at etcconnect.com, uh, or you can comment on any of the forums. Uh, but we do appreciate um, all of the feedback and all of the, and all of the time that everyone is spending with us during this period. Uh, two questions that came in, um, both from the same person, so I'm going to combine them into a single question. Stu, Brian, and Ned, this is for you guys. Um, can we talk? Can you talk a little bit about how etc rigging is is doing in Europe? Um, especially against um, some of our competitors like uh, Wagner Bureau. Oh, so I'll, I'll take that one. Okay. <laughs> um, so right now, uh, our efforts in Europe are we are. Um, it's a very different world uh, for for rigging there, uh, particularly due to the uh, specific standards, technological standards that they have there, and new standards that have just been adopted this year uh, within the EU. Uh, our focus in Europe right now is in the setup market, uh, which basically means uh, lifting that is not happening while people are currently on stage. So not overhead lifting per se, but uh, which primarily means stage electrics uh, and, you know, main drops, uh, things like that. Uh, things that wouldn't necessarily be uh, moving, you know, fixed speed rigging uh, that isn't moving while people are, are underneath it. Um, we have a, what we see there is a portion of that market that is really underserved. Uh, most of the major rigging companies there like Wagner Zero are focused on the opera house market and some of the higher end market. And it really isn't of much value to those companies to provide motorized hoist solutions for smaller venues or for less complex applications so we're really trying to right now go where that uh where that market is um we do see a lot of interest in the foundation controller there uh but we would have to make some pretty we would basically have to rebuild it from the ground up in order to be suitable uh for a lot of the european um regulations uh in terms right. of uh, overall safety and so um, that's something that's more of a long term effort on our end that uh, would be in the, pretty far in the future. Um, right now, we're really just 
digging in and focusing on on getting to those parts of the market that are underserved uh, in the setup area. That was a great answer. Thank you very much. Um, and I think that's all we've had come in. Um, okay. So Gentlemen, um, I'd like to thank you for so much of your time today um, answering these questions and introducing our audience to the wonders and costs and benefits and solutions that automated rigging provides. Uh, to the rest of our audience that is in attendance, thank you all so much for spending some time with us today. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay happy, stay healthy, don't touch your face or your friend's face. Um, and with that said, uh, I've uh, posted a couple of links into the Q&A for places to find our, our schedule of classes um, and also a place to find our video archive. Um, if there isn't anything else, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and end this session and okay. say thank you all for a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.